Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Cho Yong Sok from Dental Bean. Today I'm here to talk about tooth extraction and subsequent immediate implant placement. Ah, when we proceed with implant placement, although there are instances where we place them in a site that has already undergone healing, there are many cases where we must simultaneously perform a tooth extraction and then immediately place the implant. So then, we can consider when and how to appropriately place implants. This decision requires careful consideration and strategic planning. The timing for such implant placement is typically influenced by the location of the tooth extraction, or more specifically, the socket morphology. When performing tooth extraction, is it a sound socket condition, or is there severe bone destruction due to a pathological condition? This too is indeed another critical factor to take into consideration. We also have to consider the soft tissue condition, but the most practical reasons are, there's the patient's demands, but a greater reason is the dentist's determination and the perceived necessity. Currently, immediate implant placement following tooth extraction is extensively practiced and has gained significant popularity even in scenarios that present considerable challenges. Why might that be? Uh, there's a reason for it. There are reasons. Let's look at the advantages of placing an implant right after tooth extraction. We can decrease the number of surgical procedures. Moreover, it can also significantly reduce the entire duration of the treatment. At times, since the implant is positioned precisely in the spot where the tooth was extracted, an added benefit is the ability to place it with exceptional accuracy. In certain scenarios, by harnessing the healing potential present in the extraction socket, we are able to attain significantly superior outcomes. This is a perspective many consider valid. Moreover, it can also be seen as simpler to preserve the morphology of the soft tissues. And there's a more practical reason, isn't there? We can secure the patient. Because competition is so fierce, the idea is to place the implant quickly before the patient chooses another facility. Moreover, with immediate placement after extraction, there's a possibility of needing to augment both soft and hard tissues. To resolve this, performing additional procedures allows for an increased fee. These factors likely represent the core motivations behind choosing immediate placement after tooth extraction. However, immediate implant placement after tooth extraction does not always come with benefits. Of course, there are downsides. Achieving initial stability can be tough, or uh, it might be challenging to ideally place the implant. Additionally, if the tooth's position is misaligned, that specific site might not be the most suitable spot for implant placement. If there's severe inflammation and infection, the implant could potentially fail due to that. And at times, when attempting to cover the soft tissue, it definitely won't be a walk in the park. That can indeed be quite difficult. Moreover, when individuals venture into excessively risky or highly challenging endeavors, there's a significant potential for complications such as sinus perforation, or more critically, incurring damage to the inferior alveolar nerve. Furthermore, when undertaking immediate placement following tooth extraction, there are instances where predicting future soft tissue recession or crestal bone resorption becomes challenging. So, as you can see, there are many disadvantages as well. When, we... when examining the literature, numerous studies demonstrate that the results of immediate implant placement are remarkably favorable, nearly indistinguishable from those observed in a healed site. This highlights the procedure's efficacy. Speakers who advocate for immediate implant placement often cite these studies. However, there also exist certain research papers presenting negative findings, indicating that when immediate implant placement is performed after tooth extraction, the outcomes are not favorable. Now, since immediate post-extraction placement is the prevailing trend, even beginners are eager to perform immediate implant placement. But there are two major obstacles you'll encounter when you try to perform immediate implant placement after extraction. The very first significant challenge that we encounter is indeed the tooth extraction itself. Sometimes an atraumatic tooth extraction is necessary for implant placement, but often challenges arise during the extraction process itself, causing difficulties. Perhaps the patient is elderly, the tooth has undergone endodontic treatment, or notably, hypersementosis is present. 
Consequently, numerous beginner practitioners, before even contemplating implant placement, frequently encounter significant difficulties and frustration merely during the process of tooth extraction itself. Okay, this patient. A 36-year-old female came in complaining of discomfort in tooth number 46. It had undergone endodontic treatment and a post and crown were already in place. Given the visible fistula and the tooth's dire condition, we opted for extraction and subsequent implant placement. From photos, it looks like they just cut and pulled the tooth. Easy. Then, one might simply assume the implant was drilled and placed. However, in actual clinical practice, events are extremely unpredictable, and there's truly no way to anticipate what challenges might unexpectedly arise. All right then, let's now take a look at the video and see how things unfold. All right, she's complaining about tooth number 46. So first, we need to perform the tooth extraction, correct? The issue is that this particular tooth isn't exactly going to be a walk in the park to extract. Initially, I attempted to remove it using forceps, following standard methods. Indeed, it's stuck fast. It is extremely uncommon for one to be fortunate enough for the entire root to emerge completely and cleanly in a single whole piece. It won't be easy, will it? And it's already had endodontic treatment. Yeah, it's not working. Ultimately, only the crown ended up detaching. It became explicitly clear to me that this approach was not going to succeed. Therefore, I decided to. Okay, so now I'm using an elevator. It genuinely gives the impression that there is utterly no movement or yielding at all. All right, I'm once again taking hold of the forceps, trying another attempt at luxation. There's indeed a specific knack or method for using forceps. However, even when that technique is applied skillfully, it often happens that the tooth doesn't come out as readily as expected. Well, I actually thought I was starting to perceive a slight bit of mobility there. Despite that, it didn't work out well, and only the crown detached. So I changed my strategy. I decided to change my approach and perform a tooth sectioning. I then made the decision to divide the tooth into sections before proceeding with its extraction. Oh, this is taking a considerable amount of time, so I will quickly move forward. For a typical molar, such as a number six, the roots are generally positioned mesially and distally. I performed a deep sectioning right down the middle and bisected it, but I'm unsure if the sectioning angle was incorrect or if I simply had bad luck. Regardless, it's evident that the procedure did not turn out as intended. It simply failed to achieve the desired result, and I had a tough time. Neither side exhibited any mobility, the forceps proved ineffective, and I truly had a difficult and frustrating experience with it. Indeed, it's now exhibiting a slight degree of movement, but we are still quite a distance from achieving its complete extraction, So, I'm going to attempt tooth sectioning again, and then I will try to extract the tooth once more. This video, roughly 10 minutes in length, I quickly advanced through it, but within this approximately 10 minute video, the actual time dedicated to the tooth extraction procedure accounted for about two thirds of the total duration. Two thirds of the time was dedicated to the tooth extraction. The other third was then utilized for the drilling and the subsequent implant placement. Indeed, it is quite common to encounter considerable challenges when attempting to extract a tooth that has previously undergone endodontic treatment. This is a case I did a short while ago and working on it made me realize something. What if a beginner without much experience encountered this case? It would most likely take well over an hour and they'd probably hit a wall during the tooth extraction. It's truly quite difficult. Uh, that's what I thought. I mean, they wouldn't even dream of placing an implant. They'd have a mental breakdown. That's what would happen. Anyway, despite my strenuous efforts, I ultimately succeeded in extracting it. I just barely managed to extract it after sectioning, maneuvering, and a lot of painstaking effort. All right, I've now successfully extracted nearly all of the remaining tooth roots. It took a long time. Next. 
considering the condition of the extraction socket, specifically with the septal bone being almost entirely absent, great care must be taken during drilling before proceeding with implant placement. When doing immediate implant placement, the first difficulty is tough tooth extraction. Second, getting proper centering and drilling in the correct spot for a perfectly centered implant with good initial stability is also quite hard. Especially in cases like this, it won't be easy. When an extraction ends up like this, with no septal bone, controlling the depth is not easy. The point where the drill stop engages may not align with our expectations. There's a risk that the drill could advance deeper than anticipated, potentially leading to nerve damage. This deviation from the expected depth can occur unexpectedly. Therefore, the proper technique for performing this drilling is likewise a critically important aspect. I am conducting the preparation at the base while attentively sensing the tactile feedback. I'm utilizing 4.0 taper drills and even currently the stop isn't functioning as it should. I'm making a decision on how deep to drill, primarily relying on my tactile sensation and judgment. It is naturally understood that carrying out this type of preparation is considerably more challenging and indeed more technique sensitive when contrasted with a fully healed site. I will proceed to use the very last drill now. All right, I've completed using the final drill. I've made the decision to place a 4.5 by 8.5 millimeter implant. We can now observe that a considerable effort is being made to create a more refined preparation. This is also trickier as it's right after the tooth extraction. So I opted for a 4.5 by 8.5 implant and its placement was successfully completed. Uh, the placement went successfully so now all that's left is to finalize everything by carefully adjusting both the depth and the direction. And then uh, I will proceed to measure the stability and then secure the healing abutment to finalize the procedure. Uh, regarding immediate implant placement after tooth extraction, the methods of insertion and finalization often lead to significantly divergent opinions among different lecturers. That's because the methods they pursue are different and their concepts fundamentally diverge. My method involves attaching the healing abutment in this manner and with that, the procedure will be concluded. Actually, the tooth extraction itself is the most difficult part. Second, uh, the challenge of immediate implant placement, especially for beginners. These days, there are many opportunities to attend various lectures, and you can also watch them online. Or you have numerous opportunities to review case studies via social media platforms like Facebook. Observing the case presentations of those lecturers, it becomes evident that each individual approaches the subject with diverse perspectives and distinct methodologies. A dentist lacking extensive experience might find themselves quite confused regarding which method to adopt and whose approach to meticulously follow. Thus, the second hurdle we face involves grasping the fundamental concept of immediate implant placement after tooth extraction. The concept holds significant importance as it dictates the approach adopted and directly influences the ultimate results achieved. Well then everyone, whose word will you heed and whom will you put your trust in to follow? Well, if you're struggling to decide, the answer is quite straightforward. First, you need to look at the final results. You have to see the final results that this dentist has produced. Secondly, you should look at the specific process undertaken to obtain those results. What are your thoughts on this? Wouldn't you agree that the simplest and easiest approach is often the best? Now, while numerous individuals discuss immediate implant placement following tooth extraction, my personal approach and perspective on it diverge somewhat from the common understanding. I inherently apply my philosophy, knowledge and concepts, and there's a particular technique I strive to achieve. So my basic philosophy here is to provide treatment that satisfies both the patient and myself, the dentist, ensuring a mutually beneficial outcome. And the technique I consistently aim to achieve is what I refer to as CASS, which stands for clean, accurate, simple and speedy. 
Well, I believe this should suffice, wouldn't you agree? It's about being clean, accurate, simple, and swift. This is what I am currently striving for, and there is a crucial concept I emphasize when performing immediate implant placement after tooth extraction. My fundamental approach is to carry out surgical procedures predicated on the inherent healing capabilities that each patient naturally possesses. Because of that, my method is a bit different. I approach it differently than others, but I ultimately achieve the desired result. I am confident in my results. I can achieve excellent outcomes with a simpler process than others. So, this lecture I've prepared will focus on this subject, specifically, tooth extraction and the immediate placement of implants. Ah, uh, uh, the lecture time specifically covering the procedure of tooth extraction alone actually extends for more than three hours. To that extent, I provide detailed instruction and comprehensive guidance on these methods. This lecture has been meticulously prepared by me, highlighting the crucial points for each section, dividing them into mandibular anterior, premolar, and molar teeth, and similarly for maxillary anterior, premolar, and molar teeth. I anticipate the complete lecture will likely exceed 10 hours in duration. All right, everyone, let's promptly commence with this lecture without further delay. I hope this will be a great help to your clinical practice. Thank you. Thank you.